Ryan and Bojo, uh, which can say Megize, now Johnston. And uh, this week, I guess, I'm going to be talking about the seven grandfather teachings, or as uh, I was taught in the language, Anishinaabe Moen, Nijwa Swe, Nisho Misak. And I just want to, you know, take this moment to acknowledge, I guess, my teachers and all those wonderful storytellers that have taught me and helped me come to understand these yeah. teachings. And also, I guess, honor those 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 beautiful animals from our first family that um, that remind us of these of these teachings um, that remind us through through how they navigate the world, what values we should we should strive for to um, you know to, to, to be more well-rounded, um, I guess, and and more humble and gentler on ourselves. And uh, I guess some people, the way I've heard it too, is that the minute of Matsuin, you know, that, that, that good path, that good road. And um, one of my teachers, the way I was taught, was, uh, you know, this was coming from Basil Johnston, was uh, living in harmony, living in balance with creation. When I talk about creation, I talk about that first family and Mother Earth and everything, everything around us. I want to remind everybody out there that it's okay to take your time and it's okay to, to stumble or take a break. You know, take a break if you want, but go at your own pace. The first image, that's how I learn. I love to draw. I love to, when I draw them, I, I, I kind of retain the information that's presented to me. And I, I interpret it. As I'm drawing it, how do how do I how does this fit into my being? How does this fit into my spirit and my good mind? The first image I drew was actually the image of a thunderbird, a banana seed. And to me, the way that I was taught is that that eagle carries that teaching of love, and that that eagle through the stories I was taught, it's connected to those thunderbirds, those thunderbeams. And sometimes those thunderbirds can shapeshift into so those eagles kind of to keep watch on creation, to make sure that creation is still living in that good way, showing respect to that first mother of creation, non Mikasinika, under the earth water. And for the eagle to do this for the people and for creation shows love. It loves the mother so much that every day they'll look out on creation and it's just looking for somebody that's trying their best, that just wants to try their best. How do I practice love? How do I practice love is I try to, to just show love. I let, try to let love lead the way in everything, in my intention. The way I was taught is if you can lead with love, open heart, protected, but open to the possibilities, and a good mind, if I can just speak love today, if I can interpret the information that I'm hearing today in a good way and hear the love in it, you know, think, think in a way that shows love, then feel love. And I'll, you know what, I'll be okay. I'm going to talk a little bit about the next image I drew. And that was um, respect. The teaching of respect. The image I drew was, uh, it's actually a buffalo hoof. And you'll see two figures. Two different spirits. They're, they're spirits. And they're, they're reaching out to each other. And, the, and they're doing so in such a loving and respectful way they're they're respecting that other they're respecting everything about that other person or that other being they're actually truly listening they're they're they're, they're trying to empathize they're showing respect one of the stories about that that teaching of respect comes from the original being walking out west and on that journey, that original being met the buffalo, the buffalo nation. And they got to that, to that great flat land. I guess that we now call the prairies. 
And the buffalo approached the original being and walked with the original being. There's way more to the story than that. It's a paraphrase. But walked with the original being for some time across those prairies and taught the original being, Nenabojo, about respect. Past those teachings. The next teaching that I want to talk about is bravery. Bravery, and some people might call it um, courage. You might see it as either bravery or courage. To me, showing that, that bravery or that courage represents that strong heart. When I drew that image, I decided to draw two trees, two goblin dogs, two spruces, two gardens. And what's going on in that image is yes, there's that bigger tree there that's taking up more space. And though that root system is more visible, but don't forget that there's that other guard, little garden in there too. And a lot of what we don't see of those trees is under the earth, it's that root system. And what, how they take care of one another, how they know that they're family. Those trees will know through the, that underground network and through the mystery of creation, they can communicate with one another. They can check in on one another. They can be respectful, empathize. Are you okay? It's like finding our power together. You can't, you're not supposed to do this alone. The next image that I drew, I guess would be that teaching of a uh, truth and the way I was taught and from the imagery that I've interpreted my whole life and that I've seen I used that turtle and I drawn that turtle and on that turtle you'll see there's a paw print on the back of that turtle and that paw print is actually a muskrat it's a muskrat's uh, paw print that is the honor one of the one of the flood, one of the creation stories, part of the creation story of our people, the Anishinaabe. There's a time that the world was flooded because the people weren't practicing the Minobamatsu and creation wasn't practicing the Minobamatsu. They weren't living in harmony. They were being disrespectful to one another. They were being disrespectful to the land. And uh, that ultimate love of creation decided to, to cleanse the land, kind of reboot. And I put that paw print on that turtle's back to represent, I guess, our, our creation stories. So that turtle played a really big part in that, in that story. It, it loved the people so much, loved creation and its role, that it actually offered its back as a place to set a ball of dirt that the muskrat got from the bottom of the ocean. It sacrificed its back to, to, to start that renewal, to start that new home for the Anishinaabe to try again, to try again, try, try a little harder. And when we look to that turtle, and the, I guess the attachment to the creation story, and the muskrat, I start, to me that linkage, that thread, is, is the truth within our, within our creation stories and the truth within these teachings. The next image that I drew was the, was the image of the, uh, I guess, honesty. Honesty is a tough one. I'm still learning about that. How do I be honest to myself? How do I communicate what I need and be okay with that? How do I, I guess, honestly walk through the Minopamatsu or this path of living in balance? How do I walk with integrity? How can I practice that value? How do I put it into practice every day? 
to me, I was coming, I was still learning about that acceptance. And I guess my gift, that beautiful gift that I received from the stars. And that amazing, I guess, responsibility of carrying that gift and how I'm going to share it. The image I drew was one of the, um, one of those monocles of Nenna stories, and this connected again to that Nenna Bojo story. And Nenna Bojo got to those mountains. This longer, of course, was actually greeted by that. I guess the word I've been taught is that Kiche Sabe, or also known in, through what, the way I've been taught, Masabe, Kiche Sabe. Other people have stories all over the world of this race of beings, these beautiful beings. Some, I guess, the popular names out there are Bigfoot, Sasquatch, Yeti. There's stories of this, of this nation all over the world that have been captured by storytellers through all different points of time. When I walk through creation with integrity, practicing my value, I'm, I'm trying to, to be loving, to be respectful, to, to, to show respect and courage. And not only do I have to show that to myself, but I have to show that to creation around me. How do I act in the land? How do I act to the environment around me? How do I act to that first mother's creation? Am I doing it? Am I, am I being honest with who I am? I'm me gizzle. That bald eagle. As we learned, Megize carries that teaching of love. How am I walking through creation, showing love to creation? Am I honoring who I am? My spirit, not Niall Johnston. Am I honoring Megize? Which can say Megize? Am I honoring myself enough to put that outwards into creation? The way I was taught, that Kichi Sabe always watching to enforce that honesty and will always keep check on the people on the Anishinaabe to make sure that they are walking through creation honestly. It's a tough one. It's a tough one to learn. But it's okay. Like I said, good things are not easy. Not meant to be easy. We gotta put in the work ourselves. The manatos creation will, will help as much as possible, but we gotta live in balance. Practice walking in that good way, that good path. In the, of the next image that I drew is the, um, the teaching of humility. And again, take your time with this one. I'm still. I'm still learning this one as well. Humility is, is to know that you are a beautiful, sacred part of creation and that, and that vast family and to treat everything within that family with, with love and respect and with courage and truth and wisdom, honesty. It's to know that there is no pyramid, that it's actually a circle, and that everybody, everybody has a place within that circle. Somebody's difference, or if they're different, that's not a, it's not a reason to put up your barriers. That's a, that's a great opportunity to learn, to humble yourself, to, to, to take a step down off your ladder and truly listen to that beautiful family member that's in front of you. I decided to draw a wolf paw, which alludes to a part of the creation story when an Anna Bojo walked the earth with um, with that with that wolf, with Maingan, naming everything in creation. That Maingan, that wolf, came to Nanabojo 
And together, they walked the earth. They walked the earth many times, naming everything in creation. And Nenobojo learned that, that feeling from that heart, from that good heart, that feeling of companionship and family. And that Nanabojo had a place within that family. Humility, like I said, takes a long time to learn. I'm still learning my humility. The last teaching that I drew, and uh, it's not last because it's most important or anything like that, it's just how, it, how I was taught, is uh, that teaching or value of uh, wisdom. And uh, wisdom. I guess when I was younger, I would be confusing knowledge and wisdom. You know, with my brain, the way that, that beautiful way that I'm built, you know, I like to, to intake a lot of information. I can learn, I guess, very quickly, especially when I draw. And um, then I would think that, you know what? I know a lot. I don't need to shut my ears to creation, to my family, to my community, to the ancestors. I know enough. And that's when I started really, really, really learning about what wisdom is. How do I apply that, that knowledge through my good brain and my good heart and spirit? How do I turn that into, I guess, a value or a way to walk? The Minobamatsu. How do I learn? What's the true teachings of all this information? How can I apply that? How can I show, I guess, well, slow down, train of thought? How can I how can I really learn and listen to what all that information is telling me? And how do I how do I apply that? And to me, that's wisdom. It took me a while to get to learn that, and I'm still learning it. I'm not the wisest. You can talk to Nikki. I still make a lot of mistakes, but it's okay because um, tomorrow is a is a new beautiful chance to to try to emulate that value and to walk with that value on my journey on my continued healing journey. Like even um, today, I've been learning these, these, these teachings my whole life. But even today, I knew I, was, I woke up this morning and I knew that I was gonna have to, to talk about these teachings and share a little bit about what I know. So I've been asked in that good way. With some uh, tobacco, it was a little gift. And I got really nervous, right even before before filming, I got really nervous and started all that silliness of self-doubt and, you know, what am I going to say? Am I going to mumble? All these little things. And um, something that really helped me was that, um, is what the uh, Finding Our Power Together team, that I, what we were trying to sort out in the first week, mindfulness. And, and that activity, that grounding token, mine was that rock. And I've been holding it this whole time, that grounding token. I've been holding it this whole time. It should feel it. it's hot right now. It's ready to go into the sweat lodge. But I've been just putting my faith and my trust and my love and my, my understanding of wisdom and my ongoing understanding of truth and humility and respect all of it just trusting in that first teaching of love <laughs> week one really helped that's all for now